brought to you by Uganda. This podcast is there from outgo. You can. Hmm. Will you please listen up to what I have to say? Cause we're in for some old fashioned wrestling today. Not the vile and oily opposer each kind, but the kind that involves tens of thumbs you will find. Cause it's thumb wrestling time. Yes, it's thumb wrestling time. So we will discuss pros and cons, falls and pluses of all your favorite movies. And we will ponder the merits of cinema in this WrestleMania. Hello, pot people! Wow! That is from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Hi again! And welcome to a brand new episode of Thumb Wrestling, in which I, Rutfos, will be speaking with another very fun podcast about a certain film about which we completely disagree. What? I hear you say. A brand new English language episode already? Isn't it just three episodes ago that we did that? Well, yes it is, but then again, it is Star Wars season and my uh, guest, Zua, wanted to talk about Star Wars and he preferred to do this in English. So, there you go. Early Christmas for the international and expat crowd. Wow. I just quickly mentioned his name, but let's give my guest a proper introduction. Zua Martins is a comedian, an actor, a writer and an organizer. And one thing he organizes is Konings Comedy, a comedy open mic which he holds in Café Opera here in Nijmegen. And isn't this episode timely because I can also plug his first English open mic which he will do at Opera uh, at the 17th of December which is a Tuesday and Zua will MC that edition himself. And I'm 100% positive that will be excellent because Zua has a way with a crowd. We've worked together a couple of times in the past. For instance, we've made a sketch TV show for the local TV here in Nijmegen. And I will put a link in the description of one of the sketches he wrote, which will be mostly in English. But if you want to see his stand-up and you can't make it to Koning's Comedy on the 17th, well, he plays quite a lot all over the country. Quite regularly in the Comedy Cafe in Amsterdam, for instance. And he even had a gig right after recording this podcast on August 30th. He had to do silent comedy, you know, with the headphones and shit. Anything else? Well, his middle name is Terry. And Zua and I will be talking about a very small film which caused no stir at all. So why are we even talking about this anyway? Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, a film from 2017 directed by Ryan Johnson. And there is a lot of uh, complicated plot in there, so I could give a full summary, but I'm sort of thinking, why bother? You've probably seen it. Loads of people have. And if you're not going to watch it anyway, but you are going to listen to this podcast, then I wouldn't have to bother because it probably won't make any sense anyway. The main thing you need to know is, I love this film, Zua didn't. So let's go. Three, two, one, fight! I must say, I do have a bit of a headache. What have you done? <laughs> Went and had some drinks yesterday in uh, Amsterdam. This morning I did wake up feeling <laughs> that maybe was one beer to me. Mm, less than perfect. <laughs> yeah, not, not like I am thoroughly hungover, but mm. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just sluggish. There's a bit of a, a throb, a heavy yeah. head. <laughs> Didn't have the song in my head. Klein, klein, katertje, wat doe je in mijn hoofd? Mm. But there yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the sticky tongue yeah. <laughs> from last night, the dry mouth, yeah. the cotton mouth. No, no, that was all all fine, all fine. Just just a bit like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to be talking all day. <laughs> no worry, I have much to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you do, I bet you do. Um, oh, goodness. <laughs> are, we record- are we allowed to swear on the podcast by chance? Or? We are. Oh, it's yes. encouraged now. <laughs> it is encouraged, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a there's a three fuck minimum. <laughs> cool, like the average comedy club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Ah, yes. <laughs> it has divided many people. Like there are two very 
thorough camps. Yeah. With that. <laughs> just just to get a bit of a bearing on the conversation. Mm. Do you feel like you're really into the I fucking hate this film <laughs> camp? Or are you a moderate? Uh, I'm 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 moderate to hate. Let's put it that way. It's, uh, <laughs> there, there's a line right in the middle, and I'm just over that line. I think more towards the the hate part. But um, there's good stuff, and there's a lot of good stuff in the film. But I, the, the bad stuff just kind of outweighs it for me. And some people just have really gone over. I wouldn't sign a petition to have it remade or have it refilmed like some people do. No, that um, is just ridiculous. That's yeah. That's it's a little much. You, you surely you have more stuff to do with your time, but apparently not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm more of the r more direction. I wrote a pros and cons list even for today, and as you can see, my cons list is twice as long as my pros list. Yeah, <laughs> and I and I even Clearly. limited my my cons, <laughs> so you can imagine uh, uh, how where I lean, where my leadings lie. <laughs> yeah, all right, <laughs> but um, the most ridiculous, even more ridiculous, I think mm -hmm. than the news that um, uh, the petition was there mm -hmm. is, I think, the news that Russian trolls, the Russian troll army... Oh, God, yeah. ...got into the conversation to get more dissent, more of... A what? ...cultural confusion, <laughs> more unrest in the West. <laughs> Which is By using ridiculous. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. They, they oh, saw wow. a okay. fire and they thought, let's throw some gasoline on there. That's, That's how the story goes. Okay. <laughs> this film sucks. Let's make people hate it more. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a clear division between people who think it sucks and oh, those damn. people who think it's really great. Mm -hmm. Could also just kind of be the times, you know, because you, you, you tend to hear the, the loudest vessels, as they say. It's, it's, uh, you never quite hear the middle ground. And that's kind of the times we live in. If you want to get heard, the extremer your point of view, the more likely you are to be heard. Yeah. And then it's just easy to join one of the camps. But uh, I'm, 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 I'm more in the middle. I'm always more of a middle man, yeah. which sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but, it's, uh, it's also a question of once you've spoken when you speak out about a certain thing, mm -hmm. people will say, well, you're in that camp. Yeah, yeah. And if you get a couple of those, you will start feeling like more connected to camp that they've put you into than That's to fair. their camp. Yeah. So there's no... Yeah, you start acting more like that camp. Yeah. And at some point before you know it, you're really into that camp. Mm. No, it's true. You you can really get pushed into a corner, and now because you've been pushed into that corner, you feel this need to be like, like a cornered wolf. You have to start defending yourself more, yeah. and then you just start affirming their 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 suspicions or their assumptions about you even more. So yeah, yeah. But um, I think that might have happened to me because it's also with like the YouTube algorithm. If you click on one thing, yeah. you start getting a lot more suggestions for yeah. it. <laughs> well, I had very big trouble with that after uh, Game of Thrones season eight because mm -hmm. I made the mistake of clicking two of them and then all of a sudden because there was a huge boom of those video assays yeah. it just keep kept pouring yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah. And I just <laughs> thought I don't I don't want to listen to any more people <laughs> bitching about this because uh, at least 75% of every video is the same as every other because they make the same point yeah, and yeah. then they have their own personal spin on it which is the other 25% yeah, yeah, and true. only when um, people who I um, respect a bit more mm -hmm post even longer videos <laughs> I started watching some of them again oh okay like Lin Lindsay Alice she has a very good spin on that mm. Mm. but I also think that people are way too uh, expectant of their mm. TV shows that's true people I, have I, I, already, yeah. Yeah, I already didn't like Game of Thrones season 2 that much so mm. I was already <laughs> prepared that it might not always be as good as some other seasons right right no, it's true. People have. I mean, in a way, I get it. You really invest in characters, and well, yeah. if your if your own life sucks, well, this is a nice escape, yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, I, I don't know. It's, I mean, people always connect with with good characters and good storytelling. And That's true. if if you always want the proper resolution to a story, I mean, people loved Walter White in Breaking Bad, but yeah. it made sense that he would, if we are to believe the final shot of the of of the of the series, that he dies at the yeah. end. Or at, or at the very least gets arrested yeah. because that's just the way the story sh would yeah. end. There was no other point imaginable imaginable than him just destroying himself. Yeah, no, exactly. So it's just in very much in the way it's told that people can freak out yeah. or absolutely love something in the end. It's always sticking the landing is always the hardest part. Give us your blurb of 
uh, oh goodness last Jedi. Um, I'm assuming that everyone who's, listen- who's listening to this has watched it and know what the film is about but yeah, I'm actually we're going to go into spoiler territory very oh, much okay. so um, alright because I, I, I've, I've written a, a brief a brief uh, a review of, of, of what I thought of it and this is this is kind of where it came out I'm still going to improvise a little bit on the way there yeah yeah sure but um, kind of starts off like this let the past die Kill it if you have to. This is the idea at the heart of Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. Subversion of the old tropes of good versus evil, the idea of noble-blooded heroes, and also apparently good storytelling. This, to me, is the uh, major flaw of the film. Johnson has committed to an idea uh, uh, to subvert all of pre- all the previous tropes, but reneges on them at the last moment. You know, he, he renders all of his build-up to nothing. For a couple of examples, um, Luke is a legend. Wrong. He's not a legend at the end because he becomes an even bigger legend when he saves uh, 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 the Resistance from being destroyed. Uh, What is it? They have to tear down all the Jedi dogma by burning down the tree. Oh, no. It turns out Rey already has the books. (laughs) Yeah. Rey can break the cycle of good versus evil by becoming gray like Kylo. Wrong. She also holds on to the idea of good versus evil. Uh, Poe shouldn't be a hero. Wrong. It's okay if Haldo becomes a hero and sacrifices herself. There's all this uh, subversion for subversion's sake. He completely leans into the idea of don't be a hero, let the past die, uh, don't lean into the old, old ideas of good versus evil, but then reaffirms them at the end again. It's, 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 it's kind of what how I saw it and it came across to me. It's really trying to push the boundaries and turn everything on its head, but then falling back into the old patterns. That kind of made me wonder, then why have I watched the last two hours? <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> there's this a lot to pick apart in that already. To go back. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw this movie for the first time... The podcast was so What the was the first time you saw Star Wars Episode Eight? I actually watched it, uh, what is it, on its premiere in the Netherlands in mm-hmm. December, what was it, la- was it last year? Yeah, it was, no, it was... Uh, 2017. Uh, yeah, 2017, so it was two years ago, yeah. almost. almost. And um, because I have watched almost all of the new films on the premiere date, except mm-hmm. for The Force Awakens, yeah. uh, because I bought the tickets for The Force Awakens, um, I assumed was 10 o'clock at night on the premiere date, but it turns out that uh, the view, which normally speaking isn't open at 10 a.m., was yeah. selling tickets for 10 a.m. So I bought tickets for 10 a.m., thinking it was 10 p.m. So yeah. when we got there at 10 and it was dead quiet, uh, apparently the show had already been. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I missed uh, The Force Awakens, but uh, The Last Jedi, we also yeah. had a... Because that sounded like you completely missed The Force Awakens. I've yeah. never seen it. <laughs> I've, not, I've never seen it. I just left right into The Last Jedi. That's why you didn't understand The Last Jedi. You just didn't know <laughs> these characters. What, what the fuck are they on about? It's like, who are you people? <laughs> Who's that emo guy? Oh. But the thing is, it almost went wrong as well for The Last Jedi. We, yeah. um, we bought tickets to Pate. Yeah. Uh, to watch The Last Jedi on the premiere as well. And we, of course, naturally figured Pate in Arnhem, because that was at the time where the only Pate was. So we yeah. went to a Greek restaurant there, we had dinner first, and then, an, uh, what is it, 30 minutes before the show started, we just checked the tickets to be sure. But we weren't, but it said Pate Nijmegen, because we didn't realize that the Cinemac had yeah. been taken over by Pate. So in the last 30 minutes... They also been renamed by then. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so in the last 30 minutes before the show, we had to rush our way through the pouring rain because it was a terrible premiere day yeah. we had to rush our way back to Naime within 30 minutes to still make the curtain <laughs> right so both times I tried to watch the new Star Wars films I either missed it or almost missed it <laughs> so do, don't you think that those bad associations are <laughs> in your viewing experience <laughs> so this wasn't was this. worth the rush <laughs> Well, actually, I was really excited when I sat there. I was like, all right, this is the, the, the first one. The first, first Awakens was, was fun. It wasn't unique or special, but it was fun. Yeah. So I was like, all right, where, where are they going with this? So I was actually still quite excited. I was drenched sitting in the cinema, but that was fine. Right. I have a, a very unique passion, love for Star Wars. Right. So I will easily forgive my surroundings just to sit and watch the film. Yeah. Um, but that was the, the first time we watched it. And I, I don't think it's colored it. It's just that... 
from the because I'm always excited when you first when when the film starts, you first hear the 20th Century Fox yeah. theme at the beginning. Then you get the what is it, the Lucasfilm logo, and then yeah. you have a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And I'm just tingling with excitement, like yes, <laughs> the opening crawl is coming with the All awesome the music. All are being ticked off one exactly. by one, <laughs> and I'm getting exactly. a Star Wars boner. Exactly, yeah. a fanboy boner. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I I don't think that colored my uh, my my opinion of it. It was I'm just always excited to watch uh, Star Wars or I, new Star Wars. I actually have trouble thinking back what, where I where I watch. It. I'm sure it was View because mm-hmm. um, for these kinds of films, I just normally go to the closest one, and that's in mm. city center here. So I probably saw it at View. I think I saw it in the afternoon on the first day, mm. but I'm not entirely. Sure. <laughs> I think I saw it on my own. I have no memory of this place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But maybe I was so blown away by the film that the surroundings just didn't matter anymore. Yeah, were, were, were you, I'm just wondering... Cause you I really were, loved it, yeah. You really loved it, all right. Yeah. Also, like, on first viewing, it was not yeah. like, oh, yeah, I have to wait and let it rest. <laughs> no, no, just all the things, that it just, yeah, pushed all the right buttons for me, I think. All right. Because you're not... A, are, you a Star, are you a Star Wars fan? Or I like is it plenty more? enough. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, my fascination with Star Wars, it started a long time ago. Oh, Lord. <laughs> with, yeah. with a pinball machine. With a, okay, my, yeah. my, my fanboy boner is confused now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my, my parents, they used to have this big sports center, and mm. in the, the canteen, they had... Oh, cantina. Uh, in the canteen, <laughs> they had a, a pinball machine always. Yeah. It, it, it changed uh, every, they, every year some... Mm-hmm. Thing like that, they got another one. Mm-hmm. So I learned about Indiana Jones from a pinball machine. Right. I learned about Tommy by the Who from a pinball machine. Okay. Didn't care for it that much back then, but mm-hmm. later on I thought, oh yeah, we had a pinball machine of that. That is <laughs> fucking cool. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, also Star Wars. Uh, right. It was a pinball machine about episode four to six, and um, nice. it was a. Uh, just before episode one came out, so um, I saw I, I played a pinball machine. I saw mm-hmm. four to six, and then uh, the announcement came that hey, we're making the Phantom Menace, mm-hmm. and yeah. I got tingles all over. <laughs> Naturally, and the first time I watched that film, yeah, I really loved it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that if I revisit it now, that yeah. I'm not that big of a fan of it as I used to be. Mm-hmm. But when it first came out. I loved the shit out of the Phantom Menace. Okay. Yeah. Because well, because my, my introduction to the Star Wars universe was uh, when I lived in Zimbabwe. I was like a small boy. I was a small boy, quite young. Uh, I'd, I'd say I was about eight or something. Right. And we had some family friends, and they had the DVD box of episodes four, five, and six. Yeah. Sorry, the videotapes because we still had yeah. VHS at the time. Yeah. And uh, we borrowed them one weekend, uh, and I borrowed them every weekend <laughs> for years and just wow. watched them every single day. I loved them so much, uh, watching all three of those. And then, indeed, also when I when The Phantom Yannis came out and we watched it in the cinema uh, back in Zimbabwe, I loved it. I was like, this is, it was just an action-adventure romp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I still like the podcast, uh, the, the podcast, the pod racing scene, <laughs> the, the pod racing uh, uh, sequence. But um, some people might hate it, but I, I still love it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have I've a huge passion for Star Wars. I've, I've played so many Star Wars games as well. No, what's even uh, worse, by the way? Yeah. I actually uh, sort of developed a Jar Jar Binks imitation. No! This <laughs> 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 I go crazy. <laughs> I didn't do it very often anymore, but I saw it in there a bit. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I actually used to be able to do the entire Phantom Menace by heart, like all the dialogue. I used wow. to be able to do it. It was insane. I don't know if I still... Can you, do, can you still do a part of it? Uh, I can do the, the, the opening part, as in when uh, when the Jedi land on the Trade Federation ship. Yeah. It starts off with... Uh, the best part. <laughs> the best part. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> It's, it starts off with Qui-Gon Jinn telling one of the pilots uh, uh, to, to land on the ship. It's like, Captain. Yes, sir. Tell them we'll reach the border at once. With all due respect, the ambassador for the Supreme Chancellor would wish to board immediately. Yes, of course. As you know, our blockade is perfectly legal. 
but we would be happy to receive the ambassadors. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I can still do it. <laughs> this is fucking amazing. This is, this is podcast girl. Thank you for doing that. And I didn't expect anything like this before when I or we wanted to talk about The Last Jedi, which we haven't discussed that much yet. But you this underestimate is just my fanboy powers. <laughs> Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my Um, well, uh, let's start with Luke. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that like, he is a legend. He's built up like that. Then you see him for real. And he turns out not to be a legend. Mm -hmm. And in the end, he's being made into a legend again. Yes. But um, the thing is that they uh, want to find him to have him be the legend, like embody it completely mm -hmm. as a person mm -hmm. when he is standing there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think um, the thing about his development during the film, in the end, mm -hmm. he doesn't come there to be that legend. He sends a projection, and uh, the view that he is like a legend mm -hmm. uh, is more important than him actually standing there and facing down That's a fair the point. First Order. That's a fair point. That's so that is point. still a subversion of like what it is, and uh, the embodiment of him as a sort of a, a figure of hope Mm -hmm. is more powerful than him actually being there. While he still has his character moment with Kylo Ren, mm -hmm. which is very important, like him apologizing to Kylo, I think that's a great moment. Does he really apologize? Yeah, though? he it's, says, I'm it, sorry. It's more of a, if you strike me down, it's, it's just a repetition of what Obi-Wan says. If you, if you, that's if you, part of it. If you kill me, I'll just... But, but that's kind of my problem with it. It's that it, the whole idea is that he's trying to subvert these tropes but yeah. he keeps in the imagery in all the dialogue that's kind of repeated from like the old from the from four five and six everything just keeps coming back so why are we subverting everything in the beginning just to confirm it in the end anyway it kind of wastes your time doesn't it but i don't think it confirms We're, all these things well the thing with it the might books, give them a bit of a spin the for thing example. with the books that ray has that is sort of mm -hmm. a troubling one i think troubling yeah, that's one that i don't have anything uh uh, I don't. I can't oppose that because I, yeah. I actually I uh, prefer Yoda having burnt the books. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean that's that. that uh, uh, I'll, I'll get back to Luke in a second. But what yeah. I did like, for example, is I do like the idea of of things being grey, things not being black and white. Uh, yeah. Of what is it not always leaning on the Skywalker family to be uh, the saviors of everything, but that it's just ordinary people. It's it's Finn the janitor, it's uh, uh, Rose who's just a mechanic, and it's yeah. Ray who has no parents and is just a, a, a random person yeah. actually who has these powers. Yeah. And I'm completely fine with that. But the because I'd love to see that, just see more ordinary people get drawn into the whole thing without having it to be the super powered Neo, you know that yeah, type yeah, of yeah. thing. So, uh, but it's the execution that didn't quite stick the landing for me. Right. Um, for example, what I really loved was the the, the character of DJ, uh, yeah. who um, uh, what is it? He's the the master code breaker. Well, yeah. he isn't the master code no, breaker. But he is. Uh, yeah. he, he's he's supposed to be the one the who helps them. Who yeah, who's who plays both sides. Precisely, exactly. And I thought that was interesting. That was, the for me, one of the most interesting parts of the film was when they're on the ship, they've stolen the ship, and he's going through, uh, what is it, who this rich person's ship is. And it turns out he's a warmonger, he sells yeah. guns to the dark side. What is it, to, to, the, to, 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 to the First Order. Yeah. But also to the resistance. Yeah. And I found that to be very interesting, just yeah. exploring the idea of, of the gray and just the mechanics of it. Yeah. Um, but it was it was it's kept so small, and in the end, we just fall back into the the idea of everything being black and white again instead of gray, yeah. because uh, Kylo Ren is the perfect gray character in that sense because he is just a young guy who is tossing with the idea of okay. Um, I want to be dark and cool like Darth Vader, but when it comes to it in The Last Jedi, and I have the opportunity to kill my mother, who is one of the lost symbols of the things holding me back from becoming the dark side, yeah. I don't do it. Yeah. And later on, he also is the one who kills Snoke. So he is killing the dark and the light side to become grey in the end. So, Well, I don't think he kills the Snoke to become grey. Mm -hmm. I think he kills Snoke to take over from him. 
I don't think well, he embraces much good in that sense there because well, he still is the head of the First Order, which is still space Nazis. <laughs> space Nazis. Yeah. Nazis in space. <laughs> oh, lovely. Uh, yes, but he's doing it yeah, to it get maybe rid of... Maybe it's a big answer to Mel Brooks. After Jews in space, you get Nazis <laughs> in space. Sorry. <laughs> no, but, 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 but his point is that he, you have to let go of the past. In other words, people who are trying to control him to tell him to go a certain direction. Yeah. For Rey, it's the Jedi telling her you have to be light, you have to be moral, pure uh, for him it's no because you have to be evil you have to control the galaxy and that kind of thing and yeah he'd still be the head of the first order but he would then be able to turn it in a different direction and that's also for me where the biggest turning point in the film comes is when you have um, uh, Kylo Ren who who has now um, managed to kill Snoke and they've had the whole throne room fight scene yeah then he's standing there opposite Rey who now has the opportunity to join him to become Grey as well yeah and then she says no and decides to hold on to the old tropes of, no, I'm going to be morally good and morally superior, even though Luke has already pointed out that it was the Jedi who really helped to push things this far, yeah. to make things go this bad. I'm so not then, sure that she does exactly that, though. Well, that's... I think there's... Um, um, Kylo Ren, even if he does become grey, he still does mm -hmm. most things out of spite. He doesn't kill... Uh, Snoke mm -hmm. to um, change the galaxy for the good. No, true. He's still a he young guy who's misguided. To take power and mm -hmm. um, like um, come uh, out on top after that. So his mm -hmm. uh, motives for killing the most evil person in the galaxy, mm -hmm. uh, arguably, mm -hmm. um, is for his own gain, and that's the wrong motivation to do that. Well, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what Ray taps into because she is not. She's not. Uh, she doesn't um, shy away from tapping into the dark side force. Um, well, does she ever really tap into it? Because all all Luke says is that he feels her that she might lean into it, but she never. No, she's, he goes straight. She goes straight for the dark. That's what makes him. Yeah, makes her makes very her very afraid of her. Yeah, but in her decisions, she still decides to be the light person. Yeah, so she, that, hasn't, yeah. she hasn't. She hasn't. What is it? I think that's sort of an indication that that isn't uh, that uh, good and bad isn't that clear cut, mm -hmm. and uh, you can use the things that are associated with the dark side to use them for good. And I think that's mm -hmm. what Ray's character is about now. At this point, she she doesn't um, ho um, execute the uh, light side Jedi mm -hmm. ideals of wielding the Force, mm -hmm. like uh, be unemotional. She's very emotional when she fights. She's uh, she's raging when she's mm -hmm. going up against the the uh, what was it, Imperial Guard. Oh yeah, the, the red guards? Uh, Praetorian yeah. Guards. Yeah, yeah, Praetorian Guards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she uh, does very much mm -hmm. use the dark side of the force, but she uses it for things that are morally way more justifiable. Yeah, but is tapping into that kind of passion necessarily a dark side thing? I mean, originally it should be, like tapping into your passion would be That's the top That's what thing. the Emperor is all about, like tap into your rage and you will no, become, exactly. you will but get to us. Obi-Wan, in his fight with Darth Maul and the Phantom Menace, is also incredibly passionate when he's having a fight. Isn't that just youthful exuberance in that sense? Who are just going, ah! <laughs> instead of could be. really tapping into evil. Because I don't really ever see her go into the dark side or do anything evil. No, but the older Obi-Wan gets, the more stoic he gets. Mm -hmm. Like, very, very, he's a very no. calm old man. Yeah, well, but later, later on, later the, on. The, the, the first three, uh, like episode mm -hmm. one to three, he mm -hmm. goes from being a youthful, like a teen mm -hmm. Jedi mm -hmm. to... Uh, like a from Padawan to a Jedi Master. Yeah. yeah. No, no, very true. But 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 that's why I'm saying is 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 if 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 Ray's passion there is a sign of the dark side. I think it's just youth in that sense. In in her in one of her first battles, uh, or her second battle in this case, it's more youthful exuberance and not necessarily a dark side thing. It's if it's if it's really it dark, be. she should she she would have to be put in a, a, a morally difficult position, like a truly morally difficult position, and that comes when she has the chance to either join Ray, yeah. uh, join join Kylo Ren, Ren sorry, yeah. or or not to, and yeah. and that's where it falls a little bit apart for me because that's where Kylo is 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 already tossing with being gray. 
it's like, all right, I part of me is pulling me towards Snoke, the other part is pulling me towards... I've uh, never seen that as him being grey. I do think he's mm-hmm. a great character, and mm-hmm. but his, well, his real turning point will come. He, he um, got the opportunity to see that as a turning point, mm. but he reverted straight back into dark. Mm. Yeah, true. I mean, it's he he isn't fully grey because he's still very much in the struggle, and mm-hmm. he dresses himself in the black. But he, at a certain point, he starts to embrace more of his own personality, and that's also why he gets rid of the, the helmet at a certain point, yeah. where he has to stop being a discount Darth Vader yeah. <laughs> and become more of uh, his own Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's also why he gets rid of his helmet, and that's why he starts doing things his own way. He starts, uh, what is it? But he also still can't kill his own mother. It's still... It's still he's still in conflict, and yeah. that's and that doesn't necessarily make him fully gray, but it makes him a complex character yeah. that would help if Ray had joined something like that. She it would also put mm. her in the middle and make her gray too, or more gray. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's 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 this kind of my, my feeling there. But that's that. But that's that's where I feel the it kind of misses the mark for me. But that's All me. Right. <laughs> Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. When the film started. I was. Um, it's. It starts off with. Uh, it started off with. I, w- I wasn't a fan of the jokes. First of all, because they're very. They're very Marvel jokes. <laughs> you don't like Marvel jokes. Uh, you see the punchline coming from miles away. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, all of them. Uh, most of them. Yeah. I mean, it's. 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 It's very much the contrast of ooh, super serious. Let's subvert it with something comical. It's the throwing of the lightsaber. It's calling up the. The the what is it? Throwing the, of the lightsaber is very functional. For the way his character goes. Yeah, yes and no. Um, because emotionally speaking, for me, the, 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 we, this is the first time we see Luke Skywalker since episode six, right? Yeah. Um, for me, the idea is he, the last time he saw this lightsaber was when his father, <laughs> the biggest villain in the galaxy, yeah. cut off his hand. When it was still holding it, by all intents and purposes, he should never see that lightsaber again. And now, here, what is it? Thirty odd years later, yeah. uh, someone hands it to him. This is something that he hands got. It to him. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he got it from from Obi Wan. Yeah. Uh, who was his mentor? Uh, also, what is it? He his, it was cut off by his by by his uh, by his father, uh, whom he redeems in the end, and then he gets it back. This is a very loaded weapon, like emotionally loaded. Yeah. Um, and I get somewhere functionally that it he should try and get rid of it for this story, but the way they did it was felt like such a, a throwaway joke. It's like ah, what? throwaway joke. There jokes. you go. <laughs> <laughs> you we're we're full of puns. God yeah. damn, they're all unintentional. They're all unintentional. <laughs> but it, it it just felt so. What? No. We we were waiting the whole Force Awakens to finally see him. We see him at the end. Cut to the credits, and now we see him finally, and he tosses the lightsaber. I was like, no! For me, that's more exciting, boo, because suddenly <laughs> you have like a whole open feel, like, where the fuck is this going? And mm. that makes it way more uh, exciting for mm. me. No, I mean, I, I, I get it functionally, but uh, it, it hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt me a little. For me, it wasn't that uh, much of a joke. It was more like a <laughs> shock, like, what? <laughs> Well, that's the thing. They build it up with all of this super heavy music, and then it cuts to silence and whoosh, the toss, which is yeah. indicative of a joke. It's well, it, it, it a very use, cinematic. It does type use, joke. yeah, the, the cinematic language of a mm. gag. That, that's true. Because mm. if if they had le- if they had let out, left away all of the music, and it was just completely dead quiet, and she gave it to him, it would also be a joke, but it would be less heavy, I think. Um, because it really was this tense building music, like, oh my god, emotions, can you feel you're about yeah. to cry? And but, then... <laughs> but they had to use that because that's at the end uh. of uh, The Force Awakens, where you have uh. that build up, like, it's handing that, and mm. that, that's a moment, so they have to at least reference that feeling again before yeah. you can yeah. throw it away. Yeah. But yeah. Because yeah. this. Someone, because there's someone with the boombox there who's playing the music, and you can't just <laughs> can't just cut him out. But um, but that, that that wasn't the very first start of the film. The very first start was the was the was the um, was the, the the fight in space just out off yeah. the, just off planet. And what immediately kind of pulled me out of it was the bombing run. Right. The dropping bombs, dropping yeah. bombs. In space, yeah, <laughs> without gravity, 
doesn't have the ship. It, uh, doesn't the ship have artificial gravity? Yeah, but not like this. <laughs> <laughs> not, not like this. I, I, that that really that yanked me out of the film from yeah. the start. I was like, no fucking way. Because <laughs> um, because you have Thai bombers like uh, what is it, in four in episode and, five. Well, that yeah. that also um, near a planet, so maybe they're using the sh- the planet's gravity to drop those bombs. But that far out. <laughs> That far out? Yeah, that, that far much out. gravity? But that you can drop the it? The still has gravity. There. But, but, At least you need to be in orbit, like have... Um, yeah, I mean, you have to be a certain sort of, distance from it, but we can't quite tell how far it is. But that's the thing, because they bring this back later on as well, when they have the whole chase scene where they're away from the planet, and yeah. at a certain point, the ship they're firing at is out of range because their lasers arc... Lasers don't arc if there's no <laughs> gravity <laughs> pulling it down. Lasers don't arc in general, I think. But they don't have weight in space. How can you ever be out of range in space? That's why that also just pulled me out of it. I was like, oh, come on. This is, this is, this is something that's just done for convenience sake to drag out the... The, All the, the things chase. that are in Star Wars just for <laughs> convenience sake. Like, just d- d- the definitely, thing, definitely. sound in space. Very true. I'm just going to say, very true. just throw that. Like, That's action. very true. But it's that just, is a cinematic thing that you have to do because people otherwise wouldn't believe there's, there's, there would be no emotion if there was no space. But in this case, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's applying Earth logic to space. I mean, obviously, we have to have sound because it's a film, it's a visual medium and an audible medium. Yeah. But this is, this is too much suspension of disbelief. This is, this is a logic um, that... Because you can be illogical in film, but right. not too illogical. <laughs> I mean, it's the same with the whole uh, Death Star. They have one tunnel that goes to the central reactor of the Death Star, and it yeah. blows it up if you fire two missiles at it, which also is like a huge plot hole, which they tried to cover up in uh, uh, Rogue, Rogue One. one. Yeah. But th- this was a step too far, <laughs> <laughs> which might be weird coming from me, saying that this was a step too far. Well, there's lots of other shit that went on, but it it ah oh, it just you dragged me out of the film. <laughs> it's like, right. no! But those are those are just small stylistic things. The yeah, uh, the the one of the biggest ones that I had. But aren't these just things like um, you saw them during the film and you had like okay. Mm-hmm. But if you'd like the rest of the film, mm-hmm. you'd just have gone. Oh, that was a great film. Yeah, there was that maybe, but mm-hmm. yeah, it didn't bother me that much. Well, now it's just one of the many mm-hmm. many buttons that have been mm-hmm. pushed by you that just yeah. make you go. No, this this uh, this it starts here. This is the very <laughs> origin of all, all my distaste. Well, it's, it's not the well. It, yeah, it's it not the starting point, and that is yeah, your starting yeah. point. I mean, I, I exactly. This is just the starting point of of because where it re, where it, it really lost me because I I, I enjoy um, reading about scripts and how to structure scripts and all yeah. s- and stories and stuff like that. But the biggest problem for me came with um, when at a certain point they're on the the resistance ship. Yeah. And um, the uh, Leia has been uh, is in the what is it? She's she's in in the infirmary. She's she's uh, yeah, she's getting fixed up. And now you have Admiral. What is it? Captain Holdo? Not Captain Vice Admiral uh, Holdo. Vice Admiral Holdo. You have studied up, damn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't get the Praetorian Guard. That was all on you. Oh, but, right. um, yeah, Laura Dern. Yeah, the Laura, Dern. Laura Dern. From Jurassic Park. Fucking love her. Um, <laughs> but, from loads of uh, David Lynch movies. Oh, oh yeah. there you go. But uh, Holdo, the, it's, it's, it starts on that ship where because Poe Dameron got a whole bunch of people killed with the bombing run, yeah. she doesn't trust him. Yeah. All right, so she doesn't because she doesn't trust him. She doesn't tell anyone what the plan is for escape. She just doesn't tell him is what I get from it. But she, no one knows because also the people he decides to mutiny with also don't know. Yeah, but the, so that, the group that, around him, the uh, probably the command people know. Well, the command people know, but in a military situation, everyone has to know what the plan is, so you can get the hell out of there. Or at least everyone is on the same page. Okay, we can prepare for it, we can do this and that and that. And then she just blatantly doesn't tell him the plan yeah. because of poor communication skills. <laughs> but she just blatantly doesn't tell them the plan, which constructs this whole mutiny storyline and the need for a master codebreaker yeah. type situation. 
it wasn't necessary at all because all this time he's being told you shouldn't be a hero you're a fly boy you're all of that kind of stuff that i hate and afterwards she decides to be the hero by sacrificing herself by flying into all of those ships so she is just completely hypocritical <laughs> but Which, that's not true that is not true how is that not true all right <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go cool thing with um uh, fuck, what's his name, Oscar Isaac? Uh, Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron. Yeah. The thing with Poe Dameron is yeah. he uh, goes into his star cruiser, or what, what, what it is, his, mm -hmm. his, his, his ship, mm -hmm. and he flies towards the big... No, that's a star cruiser, big star cruiser. The, yeah, what is it? The Dreadnought, yeah. The Dreadnought. Yeah. And he starts firing at it, but uh, he's not alone. He drags other people into that fight, and mm -hmm. he gets them killed. And mm -hmm. it's a... Like, you're trying to fly in with a big heroic mission, mm -hmm. but you're not trying to uh, save as many of your own people as you can. You just go in there, try to be flashy. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Poe Dameron, that works because he's that good of a pilot. But it doesn't for others, yeah. doesn't for others in this way. So that's what um, what Leia tries to bring across to him. Because, yeah, you have the very powerful shot of her looking at that. <clears throat> Once they have the victory, she sees, like, more ships being bleeped out because they're mm -hmm. still in the fight and they're still mm -hmm. dying because they mm -hmm. are still there trying to uh, get the bomber to its place. But you can, you're completely right because that's a, it's a very the, good the, point. The, the whole sacrificial uh, thing of uh, Holo. Well, yeah, she does she, she does say, I'll do it instead of let's get someone who is less important than me to do it. <laughs> there, is, there is that aspect to it. But mm -hmm. still, her whole thing of sacrificing mm -hmm. is about saving as many people as she can. So it is mm -hmm. very much in character. Yeah, if you look at it from just the saving people, then yes, that would make sense. But if her line is, don't be a hero, but still decides to be the hero, it's still hypocritical. Because... But I'm he, not sure that she says, don't be the hero. Does, does she say that? I don't know exactly? if she says it literally like that, but she says, we don't need your kind of... Type of type of people here. That's for sure yeah. her, her line. But that's but just rash that, and just acting before you're thinking. And her thing is and, way more thought out. And that's good character development for Poe Dameron. Mm. That is completely yeah. true. But that doesn't excuse why you don't tell people the plan because this is yeah. just too. And that's true, but that's just another point. Pro yeah, but this not is about the sacrificial. But that's the thing. But but yeah. because she doesn't tell him. It incites the whole mutiny and the whole Canto Bite side of the story just yeah. because she doesn't tell him the plan, which is poor leadership, first of all, uh, but it feels completely manufactured just to create a conflict of sorts. Because if you just told him this is the plan, he'd be like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and so you wouldn't. But all I can yeah. say about that is, it doesn't feel that may that way to me, and it sounds a bit like it rationalizing is. it afterwards for you. But I'm no, not sure that, no, because, because it could be, it could go both ways that argument. But that even, I'm rationalizing it like but, for me it did work. But even even from a, a script writing point of view, it yeah. is it is a forced conflict. It's not a natural conflict because in a military situation, you'd want everyone to know what's going on. No. Of course you would. If you're in the same ship and you say, okay, guys, calm down, we have a plan, then people would calm down. But if you want people to get stressed and tell them not to have a plan, everyone, you'll get chaos, which is something you don't want but in they a military do, situation. They, they, don't, um, they don't try to make everyone think we don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is we know what we're doing is there for most people on the ship, just not for Poe Dameron and the people he's talking into a mutiny. Well, but he does, but we are never told that everybody else has been told, but specifically not them. No, but because not everyone they have goes about their way, so I'm pretty sure that they think, well, there must be a plan then. <coughs> but there's, there's, <coughs> sorry, it's an assumption, but it's a more yeah. logical assumption within a military situation mm. that everyone goes, well, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. But I fucking <laughs> hope they have a plan. Yeah, but you'd think that at this point... That, but that's why it feels like such a forced thing for me, because it it's, it's feels like a forced conflict for, for, for him to have to mutiny to create right. this whole side story of having to go to Canto Bight. Right. It, it's, a, it's a very forced plot device that could easily have been avoided, for, I think. But you could have... Okay, this is okay. kind of something we could get to, into for improving the yeah, script. Yeah, so we're, we're going to... Keep this for later? <laughs> stick a pin in it. All right, stick a pin in that. All right, yeah. cool. Because I do think there's a way to fix that. I'm serious. And don't call me Shirley. 
there's one that I would like to get off my chest, sure, go which I'm very embarrassed about. D- embarrassed about? <laughs> yes. Okay. I went through the whole film first time without realizing that Adrian Edmondson is the number one captain yeah. to General yeah. Hux. Yeah. I just hadn't... No? hadn't recognized <laughs> him. And then afterwards, I read Adrian Edmondson is in there, and yeah. I thought, who the fuck is he? <laughs> and then I saw his name, and I thought... He couldn't have been a big part. And then I rewatched it. And I saw, yeah. he's there all the time. <laughs> the, the said, opening scene, yeah. he's there the whole time. <laughs> he's, the, he's the guy who keeps reacting to General Hux everywhere until <laughs> it's just Hux and uh, yeah, Kylo Ren in the cockpit. Yeah. But True. up until that <laughs> point, he is. He is Man, so much. My first thought was, ha, bottom. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting for Rick Mail to pop out. But unfortunately, he had already passed yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah. But that would have been great. Rick Mail as General <laughs> Hux. I, would have, I, want, I want to see that. Oh, that would have been hilarious. If, I'm not sure if it's fair to say this, but um, mm-hmm. you asked me if I'm a big Star Wars fan, but I'm not yeah. hung up on what Star Wars already is. I don't know if you feel that way, that you do have that, like you're being steered mm-hmm. by previous conceptions um, in a certain way. I maybe maybe not because as I said I'm I'm still very open to the idea of exploring uh, the grayer sides of it. For example, yeah, I would uh, say that you don't sound like the big fanboys at all who who are of the opinion like this is the biggest trash I've ever oh. seen. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, there's I mean there's there's very good stuff about the film too. I mean the, it 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 looks beautiful definitely. Yeah. And that's about it. No, <laughs> but uh, I, I think there's 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 lots of gray stuff you could. I mean, even just within the context of the the fight between the light and the dark side, you could yeah. you could simply take it from uh, an, an, uh, a layman's point of view, just an ordinary man who. Because that was also there was a sketch on College Humor uh, where you have three stormtroopers at a bar talking right. about the destruction of the first Death Star like it's nine eleven. Right. Which is a beautiful way of looking at it from another point of view. Exactly, yeah. And I think you could do that very beautiful just by looking at people who live in the Outer Rim, for example. But it's, just, it's just like uh, Rosencrantz, to go all, 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 yeah. all literary on you, uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to uh, Hamlet. Uh, yeah. It could be just a completely different point of view, seeing things yeah. from different sides. And Star Wars has its origins in that kind of storytelling with yeah. C-3PO and uh, R2-D2 in the yeah. first one, which is based off of uh, um, Akira Kurosawa's Forbidden hmm. uh, the Hidden Fortress which yeah. is uh, <laughs> also based on <laughs> which is also a filmmaker Akira Kurosawa who's very much inspired by Shakespeare there you go so, <laughs> so it's all the same story people it's, it's a big thing feeding itself it's all a machine man um, and actually Akira Kurosawa yeah. said that creating is, is uh, remembering mm. Oh, there you go. Ooh, powerful quote. Powerful quote, people. They may take our lives, but they will never take this podcast. And you've seen the um, trailer for episode nine? Yes, I have. Where you do get to see Dark Ray. That is very true. That is very true. I am curious to see what they do with that. I yeah. have a feeling it might be... Um, potential spoilers ahead. Uh, I have a feeling it might be a case of Luke Skywalker going into the cave on Dagobah where he sees a dark vision of what could become him, for example. Yeah. I think it's that kind of situation. Um, because I don't think they would drop something this big of a reveal without yeah. it going back to what it was. I think this is more of just of a, hey, we're gonna, this is going to be something pretty in it, something cool. Yeah. And um, I think it's going to be something like that. Like the, the, what you saw was a vision. Yeah, I think so. I do think so. Or some kind of trial that she goes through, like maybe, an emotional trial. Or maybe trial. it's her uh, keep tapping into the dark side, but it doesn't mean that she uses it for dark. Yeah, I, I think it could be her. That she looks that way doesn't mean that she will act like. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. Kinds of people, but we'll see. I'm, I'm not sure what mm. it will be. I, I it, it it piques me enough, piques mm. my interest. No, true. I'm definitely going to watch it. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, Your fan I know that you <laughs> were going to watch it. <laughs> you fan bought the, a fan you've boy. bought the Blu-ray for The Last <laughs> Jedi, even though... <laughs> even though I don't like it. I have the Blu-ray. Hey, if I'm going to have to re-evaluate it, I need to have it within my hand's reach. <laughs> that is completely true. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Um, I also really like the way it looked when Holdo piloted the ship into the very true. Big that, that was, was beautiful. Very, very nice. I gasped at the screen at that moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just black and white. Yeah, silence. It just yeah, it was like eight different angles of just the same thing. Absolutely, and it was very yeah, nice. Yeah, Powerful very, very stuff. nice. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Uh, visually, it was beautiful. Also, the fight between um, what is it? The the the, the fight between. Uh, Luke Skywalker and Kylo Ren on yeah. the on the Soul Planet was yeah. very beautifully shot. It, uh, yeah, and it's just Luke Skywalker dodging him, and you don't yeah. notice that yeah, until yeah. I, I didn't notice either. Uh, uh, anyway. Only the second time when I knew, I thought, "Oh, this is so clever! This mm. is so so clever." It was also very cleverly put together yeah. with the whole foot thing with yeah. the, with the sand. Now that, that's exactly yeah, that right. he doesn't leave any traces. Mm. No, precisely. I didn't realize. I that didn't at all. see that at all. Even though it's, they just put it in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah. still, you're like, oh, it, what? This is I some sick sand shit. Yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, yeah, it's okay. Last the last Jedi is fine. <laughs> <laughs> But there's enough for you to uh, bitch on. So there's enough of me. There's so enough that's to bitch good about. for a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Puppet Yoda. That's just great. That Puppet Yoda's always awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one for your impersonations for later on. One of your impressions. Sorry. <laughs> and one of your impressions. Jar Jar Binks. Yoda. Yeah. You can do them all. Yeah, I can do Yoda a bit. Oh, there. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. And hate leads to suffering. Nice. Of course, it's from episode one when I'm quoting. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give it some shine as well. What uh, right. ways would you have to improve The Last Jedi? <laughs> Turns the page dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> Improvement does you! Uh, you guys can't see this, but I have completely come prepared. I have two sheets of paper uh, full of notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, th there's, there's a couple of things that... Okay, this might just be my fanboy in me, who... Mm -hmm. um, for me, the problem... Uh, kind of already starts with The Force Awakens in some instances and some instances um, Just the Last Jedi. So I'll start with Just the Last Jedi yeah, because that's what we're talking about right now. Um, my, my, my main problem was indeed for me the kind of the, the, the forced conflict on the rebel ship, uh, the, right. the resistance ship, my bad. Resistance ship, yeah. Um, because if you need, a, you need a reason to withhold information for my feeling. Uh, yeah. Especially in a military situation. So the best way to justify withholding information would be if there is a mole on the ship, for example. Instead right. of them being traced through hyperspace, there's a mole on the ship who keeps feeding the, uh, uh, the, the First Order the information of where they are on the galaxy map. Yeah, that could work. So that every time they try to jump to hyperspace or ju jump to light speed, yeah. they... He has a way of signaling them. Exactly. It's like, hey, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> Send a text. And then Admiral Hux is like, new phone, who dis? But because uh, that would be, of course, a Marvel joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that, that you could improve that there because then you have a lot more reason to withhold the information from everybody on the ship. It's like, all right, only the, the, the top level of, uh, what is it, Vice Admiral Haldo and all the people around her. They have that information. So anyone without, outside of that yeah. would then be kept in the dark. And then at least they would also know that the mole isn't within their circle. Exactly, yeah. Just to slowly... And then you'd also have like right. a small detective, uh, 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 what is it, sequence, storyline that you right. could implement on the ship, which could also be very interesting, I thought. Yeah. Um, which I thought was a bit of a mischance. It would justify a lot of stuff and it would create a new it avenue. It would also justify Cantobite still because he doesn't know... Uh, what about Canto Bison? That you would still have that sequence in there because uh, oh, if those still... people would know about the mole and uh, yeah, if 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 they think they're being tracked through hyperspace somehow, then you yeah. would still have that if necessary. But actually, they still think that there's certain technology, and they even think they know how to get rid of that. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah it's because it's, Rose thinks oh, yeah. that's a technology, so yeah. that's why they have to go there. She could do that. If I mean, you could still leave that in if you want to, but if you, I just more of a reason to justify them being on the ship and keeping everyone in the dark too. But if, you don't, the rest. if they didn't actually do that, that means that Rose invents the technology to track <laughs> people through hyperspace. <laughs> 
Oh my god! Yeah. She's the mole. <laughs> it it's was Rose it's, all it's along. Like the the <laughs> comics writer Goomba. He once oh, said, yeah. "I once mm-hmm. uh, dreamt that someone else made this joke." And I thought, I woke up and I thought, "Oh, that's a good joke." And then he realized, "Hey, if I dreamt that, and I technically wrote the joke, so he then <laughs> put it in one of his comics." Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the the best way to make jokes. <laughs> Um, let's see a couple more things that I had um, I think what, what? yeah some people have said this I didn't think it was really necessary um, but some people said if you replace Admiral Holdo with Admiral Akbar, that he'd be the one who sacrificed himself to save him it would he give, was already dead yeah he'd already been blown up yeah. but <laughs> sucked out into but space if, if he wouldn't have died there because he was on yeah. the toilet then there you go yeah. <laughs> Could, could could be, but that's not really a suggestion I would have made. I would have uh, let He's a late uh, space alien. He can take a long time on the toilet. There you go. <laughs> Fish droppings. <laughs> um, I, I think I might have let Leia die, really. Uh, when when she was sucked out into space, I was like, oh, okay, this is it. She, yeah. had, she had her moment of connection with Kylo Ren, and yeah. he wasn't the reason that she died. Yeah. Um, but I did realize, oh, okay, I had a feeling of... This is surprisingly okay, <laughs> but then they brought her back, and I was like, "It, uh, it, it, it didn't pop on screen for me." It was like, mm, "This feels a little forced somehow." Forced, I yeah. <laughs> sorry, I just keep doing it. I'm so yeah. sorry <laughs> because she literally uses the force to get. Yeah. Oh lord! But people, I'm, I'm that's, not. That's one of the things that I, um, I, I dislike as an argument against her coming back mm-hmm. and it's not one you're using so I'm not accusing you of anything oh, no, she's like, right. she force flies and yeah. I think she people doesn't people do force fly <laughs> well not necessarily that but she doesn't even look like she's force flying she looks like like Luke does when he's trying to get a mm-hmm. lightsaber only she has more less mass mm-hmm. than the whole ship so if she wants to get through the door <laughs> she just has to go through to the door which is stuck to that thing that's and fair. then she'll go towards that so I think there's a very good explanation for that's fair how she that's does fair. that she fair. force flies <laughs> she force flies people people forget that uh, Darth Vader uh, can't really jump so he kind of force flies <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see I um at and the at the end where they're on the the salt planet and not the the, the snow planet um there's a moment where Finn decides to sacrifice himself yeah kind of like Admiral Holdo yeah and I also thought whoa this is pretty ballsy like when yeah. he's flying in where he's about to fly into thing I thought oh this is cool I mean yeah. I, I would have been okay with it being the end because his arc in from the Forks Awakens into this one is that he should become a rebel yeah. Um, and being the ultimate rebel is also, in this case, being sacrificing yourself for the greater cause. Yeah, to save um, loads of other people. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, but now he is denied that Holdo hero fate, sacrificing yourself by Rose, which yeah. I found was a shame. Not that I want to see Finn die, but I think it would have been a fine resolution for his character, really. And then, obviously, you have the awkward kiss... Um, which was very awkward, but uh, on, uh, I find it so difficult because on the one hand, you have Holder who says, okay, I'm going to sacrifice myself to save everybody. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't have agreed with it because I thought it was hypocritical in the beginning, but we'll, we won't get back into that. Yeah. <laughs> but then you have someone who wants to do it again, yeah. but now he's stopped from doing it. So what is your message exactly? Are you supposed to sacrifice yourself for, the, for everybody or are you supposed to save the individuals now? That because that's also what Rose says we have to save each other that's how we're going to win this yeah so he was about to do that <laughs> he was about to save everybody else from all of this so it, it's it's a really conflicting message there for me at least yeah I, I, thought, I do understand yeah. that if, if Finn would have died there I thought it would have been an excellent end for him yeah I know too me too I thought oh he's going to do it yeah and I was I so, so excited too. with that yeah no me too because that, I don't, that I don't dislike the way it ended up but yeah I mm. do uh, do understand the confusing Mm. part of the message there yeah. you know it was, I don't know it was and yeah what is it there there I, I, I don't mind certain things okay, there were certain because of the directorial change because J.J. Abrams wrote The Force Awakens and um, uh, what is it like an outline for uh, The Last Jedi and uh, The Rise of Skywalker uh, Kasdan wrote the outline for The Last Jedi but okay. then the, um, the Force Awakens was changed so much in between that mm. it didn't fit anymore okay. and Ryan Johnson just got like almost carte blanche to do his stuff with uh, oh, Last really? Jedi. 
Hmm, okay. Because I thought it was JJ had written like uh, all, not all three, but the first one and then two basic ideas for yeah, the maybe, one. That would come and maybe maybe uh, um, Kasdan took it further. I'm not sure. Mm, no, uh, it could be. Uh, this, is is La- specific. this is Lawrence Kasdan, the son of Irvin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lawrence Kasdan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I, because because you have a lot of setup in the first one, uh, in the Force Awakens, that isn't quite paid off. Which doesn't really have to matter because I don't mind that Ray comes from nothing. I actually kind of like the idea that she cool. comes from nothing. Yeah. Um, so I don't hate the Last Jedi that much. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. There, there's just other things that were set up that I thought could have been a lot more interesting. But that has to do more with the Force Awakens, like when they have Finn, a stormtrooper who shows his face, yeah, like he has a humanity. I thought they could have done a lot more with that. Just I think they should do more with that yeah. at some point. Maybe, no, not, maybe not even in this trilogy, but I just do that at some mm. point, yeah. No, because I think that would be a very interesting angle if you find out that, indeed, that all these stormtroopers who are used like cannon fodder, really, yeah. <laughs> turn, really? Yeah. turn out to be uh, people uh, yeah. who are taken away from, or at least in the case of the First Order, they're taken from their homes and they're brainwashed and they're made yeah. into kid soldiers, pretty much. Yeah. They could really have made that a very powerful arc for him uh, in, in that sense. That he starts freeing others. Yeah, that he starts freeing others. That he is the Star Wars Morpheus. <laughs> <laughs> he is Morpheus. <laughs> uh, that could be interesting. I thought that could be a really beautiful no arc. No one can be told what the Resistance is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that would also have given uh, at a certain point when Ray is kidnapped in The Force Awakens they could have ha- that could have been a very it's just a guy who shouts traitor at him in the end uh, when they when he fights with the lightsaber and there's this yeah. other guy he fights with but that could have been a ve- very heavy fight for him yeah. that they could have brought into yeah. uh, this one as well where he fights Captain Phasma because that's kind yeah. of like his shadow yeah. if if she is like the ultimate evil he could become yeah. he would have to fight that and join the resistance in the end yeah. so so Captain Phasma could have been really pinned very powerfully as his opposite arc yeah. in that sense that she keeps coming back but because he throws her in a trash compactor in yeah. The Force Awakens and he beats her quite e- easily in uh, The Last Jedi, which I thought was a shame again because she just gets shit canned all over the... T- all Stuck over the- yeah, exactly. It's like, ah! Oh. They could have done so much more with his character and with hers if she was like the, her, the dark... Her, yeah. If she was the dark Vader think, to his um, own Yeah, Bridget Christie is on the use. I don't mind... Mm. I don't... Yeah, just character-wise, mm. with Captain Phasma, I don't mind it that much. Mm. Uh, what, that she was... Just tossed off, really. She's not or. that interesting a character. It's mostly like, mm-hmm. I would like to see that actress do more with that part. Than Very true. That part is then the character has is. has more in it. Mm. And um, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm still looking forward to what they're gonna do in the next film. So other yeah. other tips than that, no. It's more of a. It's. It, I think the whole thing could have been changed a little bit. I even wrote a spec script <laughs> really? for how how I would have wanted um, this episode seven to go, just as a, right. just as a complete departure from episodes four, five, and six, and all and everything before that. Have you changed much from the actual um, film? I have a, com- it's a completely new story that I thought would be interesting. Tip one. <laughs> film tips, things you got to watch. I I was I was told to bring to bring three, um, but I brought more. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll, we'll cut out all the things that yeah, aren't and how long we have necessary. to get through all of them. Uh, but uh, a couple of things that I thought uh, people might really like to see is um, a very strong character piece that I watched a couple of years back was Locke with Tom Hardy. Mm-hmm. I think it's like from 2013. It's a really good film. Just him in a car. It's just him in a car. It's beautiful. It's on it's, the phone. It's on the him on the phone uh, driving from A to B. Yeah, um, and it's just him talking, and there's just so yeah. much character in in that, and beautifully shot as well. Very simple, but to maintain someone's interest, one and a half hours with just a guy in a car, yeah, is incredible. Because I was on the tip of my seat the whole time because right. it's just this very slow reveal of yeah. information. It's like, where is this going? What's this about? Yeah, what what are all the conflicts there? And the writing was just impeccable for that, and I'm that's beautiful. Just to see that kind of stuff, oh, I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I um, still have to watch it, but I'm very, very curious to see it. But it's mm. one of those that I um, keep having on my I have to watch that soon yeah. list, and it just <laughs> hasn't happened yet. Mm. But I, it will. Tip two. <laughs> Next film. There's, there's. I'll, 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 tr- I'll try and keep it down to three. Um, a lot of people have probably seen it already, but Ex Machina, 
uh, also with Oscar Isaac in it. Yeah. Boom, Link. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, when I first watched it, I really loved the film. Also a very strong character piece. It's also um, with uh, Hugs. Also with uh, Hugs, indeed. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Well, I don't know if he's sure if he's an admiral or something, but but also with Hux, indeed. General Hux. General, that's it. There we go. So you, <laughs> you are prepared. <laughs> I've just but, listened to way way too many podcasts about uh, <laughs> the last Jedi in, the, <laughs> in preparation. <laughs> yeah, in the in the uh, recent past. No, yeah. There you go. But that was also a a very strong uh, character piece, but also a lot of philosoph- philosophical questions that mm-hmm. I I really enjoyed. Yeah. Just also again, once again, the slow reveal of information and um, uh, the, the main character, the robot. I've forgotten what her name is. But yeah. she, uh, w- how she slowly maneuvers her way and starts manipulating people around her just to yeah. get out, and just showing this very human thing in a robot is yeah. is, is absolutely fantastic. The, the, the ending without spoiling anything yeah, is yeah. so fantastically worrying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> just oh, it's absolutely also beautiful. the whole filmmaking with that, the whole way they shot it and mm. edited it is just fantastic beautiful. to tell. No, definitely that beautiful. story and just mm. uh, the way she manipulated. Manipulates everything is just being told by mm. where the camera stands, where yeah. you see reflections on yeah. a piece of glass and stuff like that. It's mm. just wonderful. No, definitely, De- definitely, uh, I definitely uh, advise it to anyone who wants to watch yeah. a good film. Tip three. <laughs> Finally, uh, one that I watched for the first time about six months ago, I think it was, is a uh, Princess Mononoke, uh, an yeah. anime anime film. Uh, very nice. It's an, it's, it's, it's an older film. It's, re- it's relatively old. 1997. Yeah, it's it's the old. one that uh, got uh, Titanic off the number one spot in Japan. Boom. Nice. Well, there you go. Yeah. But uh, also a very good, a very good um, film. Very much about nature, humans, uh, yeah. people in there. Uh, the relation between civilization and uh, nature and how that collides and how that might work together and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a very beautifully drawn film as well. So it's very strong storytelling too, and it's beautiful characters, beautiful drawings, and and definitely something I'd, I'd definitely make uh, suggest people watch if you are into good anime. Yeah, it's it's the one classic. that got me into Ayao Miyazaki. Oh, there's the go. first one that I, uh, was advised to me. I read it. Um, yeah, it wasn't a book. Mm-hmm. That I read about anime when I was very much into Dragon Ball Z and mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, <laughs> and then I saw that and I thought, you can do. This with animation, <laughs> good shit. Yeah, this is the best. Uh, <laughs> awesome, nice. No, but and also got me into samurai uh, films, probably. All right, like the the. Old, I still want to watch Akira at some point because I you heard should. it's really good. You want to uh, borrow it? Have it on oh, DVD. you have it. Awesome. I would actually love to borrow it. And so we fought and we battled as we beat each other up. Both of us tried hard, but we both failed. it now maybe we can finally let the past die thank you again for coming by Zua I had a lot of fun with this one and if you remember Zua's uh, suggestion of putting a detective on board well that ties in nicely with Ryan Johnson's newest film Knives Out a proper whodunit with Daniel Craig in the lead I saw it last weekend and I liked it very much so you can consider that a suggestion from me and also another one which i saw which is really really good is eighth grade the film by bo burnham also a comedian by the way and it is such a lovely little film and you should watch it it is on netflix it's so easy to watch it's so great to watch it is about a girl called kayla who's in her last week of eighth grade and it just captures that age so well this has been a cinema production presented and edited by me, Ruud de Twintigste Eeuwse Vos. 
And all the jingles are, as always, by the genius. Roy Gutters. You can find this podcast on social media, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And of course, you can send all your hate mail to dumpywasselen at gmail.com. Next episode will be out one week before Christmas. Gucci! Ladies and gentlemen, could we have an enormous round of applause, please, for our host, who has once again succeeded in bringing to us a plethora of top-notch, cinematographically-themed entertainment. We have had an absolute ball, have we not? Fact Check Norris! Fact Check Norris here. Dit is geen fact check, maar een public service announcement. Deze keer is er geen preview, want de volgende aflevering moet nog op worden genomen. Maar ik geef je wel een tipje from the slauwier. Aflevering 23 wordt een special Christmas episode. Fact check Norris out. This podcast employs a strict only like and subscribe if you really want to. Policy. Okay, bye.